Mass intention today is all for all fathers living and deceased. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. In today's reading from Acts of the Apostles, we learn the importance of taking care of all those in need. Let us seek forgiveness when we have not done so. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, bring us to an everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Set aside, O Lord, the bond of sentence written for us by the law of sin, which is the Paschal, which in the Paschal mystery you canceled. Through the resurrection of Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God, to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to the task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. The proposal was accepted to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Nacar, Tima, Herminus, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in Exalt, you just in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten-string lyre, chant his praises. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope in his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spirit and family. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When it was evening, the disciples of Jesus went down to the sea, embarked in a boat, and went across the sea to Capernaum. It was already grown dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea was stirred up because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat. And they began to be afraid. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. 
They wanted to take him into the boat. But the boat immediately arrived at the shore to which they were heading. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our first reading from Acts to the Apostles, there's this whole conversation. How do we best take care of the widow? How do we best take care of that person or persons in need? And, and as we hear from Acts of Apostles, there, there, was a, there was a big conversation. So when you get a group of people together and you have a problem to solve, what do you do? You form a committee, especially in church world. And that's exactly what they did. But the committee, through prayer and discernment, came up and how best community can take care of those in need. And then Stephen and the other apostles were appointed. As disciples of Christ, as one who learns from the Master, we're called to live a stewardship way of life. And that, that what that means is stewardship is how do we take the care of the things entrusted into our care, our time, our talent, our resources, and how do we best use our time, our talent, and our resources to build God's kingdom by taking care of one another. Well, what part of our time, our talent, our resources do we dedicate to taking care of those who are in need? I think that's the message of the first reading today. So as we journey through these 50 days of, of uh, Easter to Pentecost, we take assessments, kind of like uh, spring cleaning. Take assessment of our lives. How am I living as a disciple? How am I living that stewardship way of life? A am I taking care of those in need? Am I heeding the call of the Lord to take care of those in need? A message for us to live today as we're so graciously blessed in our lives to share what we've been given to bring comfort and to take away some of the fear for those who are really in need. Knowing that we need not be afraid, we join together in faith and trust to present our needs to the Lord. For the Holy Father, Pope Francis, may the Lord continue to bless them and use them for his glory. Let us pray to the Lord. For political leaders, may they be blessed with integrity and humility and service to their people, especially the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who live in their lives in fear, may the, may the Lord look graciously upon them and help them hear and believe. In the comforting words of our Savior, let us pray to the Lord. For our community of faith, may the Lord continue to call forth people to serve the church and one another. Let us pray to the Lord. And for the petitions we hold within the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers, which we offer in confidence and faith, knowing you will grant us whatever we need. We ask this in the name of your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given. Human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Sanctify graciously these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere. To give you thanks, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. We bless your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, plays our bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her spouse, St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, St. Catherine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days so that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And now let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. sins of the world have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. May only say the word, and thy soul shall be here. act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and a desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. We have partaking of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth and charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We just heard the, the word in this, this prayer about charity, and that whole first reading from Acts of the Apostles was being about people of charity, people of helping those in need. So as we go forth this day, let us meditate on that word charity and how we can grow in charity of one another. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.